It's an interesting community of people, the commuters, because there's so many commuters in New York City. So many people work in the suburbs and, and commute in every morning and go home every night that it's its own population of people that aren't counted as New York citizens, but are like still an integral part of how everything works. This is the train to Grand Central. I actually prefer the commuting thing, like it's not so bad. Though it is nice to be close to school and like wake up 30 minutes before class instead of an hour and a half before class. I actually really did like my commute. It was really fun to like sit next to like businessmen while they go do their business and you're like, oh. <laughs> On days when I have to take my brothers to school, they have to be to school by 8.15 at the latest. So I wake up at six with them and then we get ready for school. I leave my house by seven to get to their school by 8.15 to be able to come back. They go to school in Columbus Circle, so we take the J train to the A train, then take the A to Columbus Circle, I walk them to school, and then I take the one train back downtown to 14th Street. And that gives me just enough time to make it to class for nine, and then it starts all over again the next day. I would take an 8 a.m. train, and I would usually get into Grand Central at like nine o'clock, and then probably 10 or 15 minutes later, I would take either the four, five, or six, and then I would get into Union Square, and then I would walk to class. I take the J train to Essex Street, where I transfer to the F train, or the M train, which run on different platforms. There's two staircases you can take to get to the M train, and people stand at one of them, and I usually stand at the other. And I can say that when those people go up the stairs, that means the M train has come. So I can take the show, like the other way around where there's less people to get on the train. So that's fun. <laughs> yeah, I think that's like the most exciting <laughs> part of my commute. Like, which train comes first? When I get on the train where I live, there's a lot of open spaces. There's a lot of trees. It's really beautiful. And as I continue on down the, the train line, you get to a couple bigger cities, a couple smaller cities, things like that, just the areas that we have in Connecticut. But it's an interesting, really slow like urbanization from where I am and then you're in New York City. So I have lived in Bedside since I was nine. So I've like seen the neighborhood changing over the years. And there have always been like giant lots along Broadway where the train runs, um, which have now been rapidly turned into like buildings. And even just like on the walk to the train, it's interesting to see the demographics of the people on the train and what that looked like when I was younger taking that same train. But I would say the weirdest part is when you go underground because it's so dark and you're like leaving the underbelly of Grand Central. And then in a split second, there's just so much light and you're like on the outskirts of the city in Harlem and things like that. I would always listen to music on the way in. Occasionally, maybe read things on my phone for class. On the way out, sometimes I would write essays on my phone, which is very difficult. I do find it difficult to read on the train anyway and I don't retain information that way. So I try not to do that, but when I can read, I'm not reading for school, I'm reading like leisurely. <laughs> it's like taking a break. It's kind of like like a slow motion period of time where there's nothing happening and you can't do anything about it and you can't create something for yourself to do if there's nothing. Especially as a commuting student, you get really used to being alone because you commute in every day alone, you commute home every day alone. I think for me, on top of my commuting experience, my familial obligations at home kind of makes my experience different than people who just like live on their own. My dad has commuted to work in the city every day for like 30 years and he taught me like some secret stuff like you know like the best places in Grand Central for you to sit down, the best places to like get food when you're walking around. So even though I'm far away from home when I'm here it's really nice that he's also here. Uh, my family and I have had to make like an effort to do things outside of like home life. Like tomorrow I'm taking my mom to a Broadway show just because all these experiences have strengthened my relationship with my parents and my brothers too. I do sometimes miss commuting. It was fun, but I think I do want to live in New York for at least a little bit. Going across like the Williamsburg Bridge is always really cool when it's super cold outside and you see like the East River's frozen over. I remember there was like a beautiful sunset one day where the sky was just like a vibrant pink color and I'm like, ah, oh, I love this city. My name is Amber Vanterpool. I'm a senior um, culture and media major with a minor in global studies. So my name is Jessica Duraco. I'm a freshman at Lang. I'm undecided currently, but I'm thinking something within screen studies or media or something like that.